Hello, so in this video I've got an update for my MBT editor filter. Um, this filter is I think by far my most versatile filter um, and now I've expanded it. Um, just a quick note, I have ported it to Linux and Mac and I'll show, I'll show how that works in a bit. But I just want to go over some of the new features I added that are that's present in both versions of the filter. So first thing, I'm going to look over the old version of the MBT editor filter, just to see what it looks like. So and the old one had these three options, tile entities, entities, and tile ticks. And you had to choose which ones you wanted to select. Um, and if it didn't find like entities or tile ticks, then it wouldn't put it into the list. And then you have your standard MBT editor here. Um, actually, the view clipboard option didn't exist in the, uh, I don't think it did, pretty sure it didn't in the old version. This is just a, this is a copy kind of of the old version that I was working on. Anyways, um, the new version, let me find it real quick. The new version now has a different, um, different interface. Basically, you you start off with one of three options. You can edit a selection from a world. You can edit a, f a file, including schematics and .dat files, such as scoreboard.dat. And you can also edit the level.dat of the world that you're in. So I'll start off with the selection. You can see that the filter now has an empty entities and tile ticks list. This means that you can add new entities and tile ticks within the selection if you want to, or even outside, actually. But that's neither here nor there. Um, and you can see it's just the you know same old NBT editor. Uh, one difference is that entity or um, integer arrays and byte arrays now are edited within uh, the single window instead of appearing as a list. So I'll, I'll get to that in a bit. So among the new options are clipboard, these up and down arrows, and find. Um, that's just within the window itself. Uh, some of the other things that have been modified. The new and edit windows now have some more options. Um, like if you're modifying an, int an integer based value such as a, a long, an int, an int array, a byte array, a short, and a byte, you have a hexadecimal value. So if you click this it will trans transform the uh, code or the, the values into hexadecimal. This is particularly useful if you're modifying co or, uh, HTML color codes. I can, this, this is a uh, firework spawner, so now I can just enter in uh, the straight HTML codes and then change it back to from hexadecimal to decimal. Another thing, let me edit a, edit a command block. So here's one. Um, if I go into the MPT editor and filter it, and I go into the, in, the uh, entity, if I open up um, the edit tag, the format command, which only works for tag strings, will take a any command that has NBT data and will format it out. So you can edit it more easily. And you can unformat it. Uh, this looks, this is a lot more useful for really large, um, really large commands. Um, also, you can see on the on the side there's a select all button to select everything. There's a button to insert tabs because the way I had to program this, you can't insert tabs. If you hit tab, it'll try to switch to a different button. Then there's also a button to insert section characters for color coding. Um, some other modifications I made: the copy and cut. Now, when you when you copy something, it will put it into a clipboard. So if I open up, say, Notepad, and and then I can paste, and anything it was that was in, anything that was selected will sh uh, be turned in, converted into a string, and you can paste it into Notepad, or you can even paste it into Minecraft. I'll show you where this is really useful. If we do a really large um, entity like this spawner right here, and we go to Filter. If we say copy this right here, we can look at the clipboard and it's a really long um, command. And you can paste this and modify it however you want. 
like a, uh, just to demonstrate um, the format command, I'll, I'm going to add a new tag, name it whatever, paste, and if I do a format command on this, you can see that it formats it out. It makes it a lot easier to edit. And when you're done, you can unformat it. Um, these up and down arrow buttons, these are made for items that are inside of a, of a list. Um, best option, best way to demonstrate that is with an entity. I'll use these, these uh, item frames over here. The uh, position tag is a list. These are used for moving items up or down the list. So it's, you can, I don't recommend doing this with position tags because you can screw up their location. But if you're modifying, say, a, a mob and you wanted to change which equipment was in which slot, it's easy just to select it and hit up or down. So, uh, lastly is the find. Uh, this, this window isn't exceptionally useful. It just does forward searches. So, uh, starts off from the last place that you clicked and um, basically it will it'll take a blank option as saying everything so if you leave all these on um, the tag types unchecked it will find any tag type and it also has exact matches and and a match case so if I wanted to find something called I don't know, say tile I click find now it'll find the tile if I make it an exact exact match, doesn't find it. If I do it a case sensitive, it doesn't find it. So this this is somewhat useful if you're editing a whole bunch of entities. Um, I re had to rewrite a large portion of the filter, so you should be able to edit very large selections now. Uh, before I think it topped out around 200 or 300 entities. Now it should be on the upwards of I don't know, thousands. Lastly, um, I'll show off the file and the uh, level.dat. So if you just select file and you click filter, it'll open up a open window. So you can open up any schematic you want. And as you can see, the, the, the byte arrays now appear as big, you know, lists. So each of these um, numbers is a byte, is a uh, block. You can see that this particular schematic is a bunch of 137s, which is, which are command blocks. Um, yeah, I mean, there's not a whole lot I can say. I mean, you can edit these and do the format command, and you can see everything. It's pretty useful. And then once you once you've modified something. I'll go ahead and say I'll change this this right here to air, which is zero. Done, done, and then it'll open up a new save file dialog box, and you can save it. And it will say file save. This exception shows up so that it doesn't modify the world, because when you modify a schematic, that's outside of the world. Anyways, if I reopen that, you can see that I that last byte is still zero. So yeah, it works. I've, and this works across all platforms. So, and then lastly is the level .dat file. And you know, same deal. Modify whatever you want. You can change the player's um, settings, his location, his uh, items, his inventory. Um, if you want to, oops! If you want to edit a player's dat file, you have to do file, and you have to go to the world itself. And now they're labeled with this uh, GUID. You can see that this player is should be me. Maybe they don't have the name in there. Yeah, you can change if they're flying, all this crap. So now you now you don't need an external uh, NBT editor. You can use the filter to modify other files if you want to. That pretty much sums it up. Now I'll just show it off brief, briefly on um, on other operating systems. 
So first I uh, will do it on this. This is Ubuntu. So here's in uh, MC Edit and in Ubuntu. Um, I've only tested it in Ubuntu. I haven't tested in in um, in any other distributions. Um, it should work. Uh, I forgot to mention that if you're running it in if you're running it in uh, in Linux, you need to make sure that you have the TCL TK um, packages installed. So. So you need the Pyth uh, Python TK package. That's for Ubuntu. I'm not sure if Red Hat or if Slackware, if they use a different package, but it's basically the TK enter, uh, TK, TK uh, and TCL package. Because uh, the way the, the filter works on other platforms is that it uses the system version of uh, Python in order to in order to run. So I'll just demonstrate it real quick. Might have to close and reopen and see at it. And the mouse look doesn't work very well in the virtual machine. It kind of spazzes out. It's really hard to control, so bear with me here. So if we go in and look at the MBT editor multi platform, you can see that it pretty much works. Um, you'll notice that it doesn't have any nice icons. I tried my best to make the icons work but it just absolutely refused so I'm sorry about that. Uh, but it works just the same. Um, you notice that it has a few less commands. That's because tab button works. It'll insert a tab key, and if you hit control A it'll select everything. So you don't need the select all or the tab buttons. Uh, but it works the same. I'm not gonna you know redo everything just to show I mean, if you you can move stuff up and down, and you can copy, and you can view, you can find. So this is a the Python or the the uh, Linux version. Well, the the multi-platform version works for both Linux and Mac. Um, I'll show the file dialog box. Real quick, it's still it's uh, slightly different. You'll notice if you launch it that you'll see this TK window that has to be open in order for the file dialog box. But uh, but uh, you can select files. You don't have to use MC Edit's painful built-in file browser. If you lose the window, uh, you might want to note that if you try to modify anything in the window, um, MC Edit is basically frozen until you're done with the filter. So it will appear usually as like an icon and you can see the text so and then you can modify the uh, schematic if you want to. And actually I should show that um, And when you're done, it does a save file dialog box, and then you can just click save, and it will override if you want. Or you can save it as something else. So that's it. That's the uh, that's the Linux version. If we go to the Mac version, oops, that's not Mac. Where is that piece of crap? There it is. So here's um, Macintosh running in a virtual machine. Um, I kind of run MC Edit a little bit differently on a Mac than what people are probably used to. I'll go ahead and launch it. This has an issue of the mouse cursor being a little bit off. Oops. Using uh, virtual machines pretty painful. 
So we'll go into the multi-platform, click filter. Now on Max, it works a little bit differently. The uh, NBT editor window will sometimes pop up as a different window down here. It'll say Python. So go ahead and click that, and same deal. It's uh, the editor. I'm not select anything. Yeah, I didn't select anything. Okay, I have to use the keys. What is it? That. It's just a hair off. So if we go and click filter, and again it'll appear as something else, and you can modify, you know, same thing works identically to Windows and and uh, and on and on Linux. Um, the the file dialog box works pretty much the same thing as on Linux, except. It, you know, you'll still have this TK window, so ignore that, and then you can select your schematic. Oops, I hit cancel. And this is the same deal. And it looks a bit different if you save it. It, I'm not sure if this is a normal save file as dialog box, but there it is, and you can save it. Replace. So that's pretty much it. Now you might be wondering why it says that it's that it is multi-platform. Well, it will work in Windows, but you have to have Python installed along with the TCLTK library, which is d the default if you use the, um, the installation version that's on python.org, I think. So if, if you do it in Windows, you know, same ugly version, you don't get the nice icons. I recommend using the Windows version if you're in Windows, unless for some reason you really want to use an uglier version. Yeah, it works just the same, so. And you can see that it works a little bit differently. And here's, here's the ugly TK window, and here's the open file. So th this will work in, in Windows too, but you have to have, um, you have to have Python installed. And you'll notice that it's a little bit slower too, like if I cancel, wait, wait. You use the Windows based version right away. So the if you're you if you're on Windows I recommend using the Windows based one. So I'll go ahead and put links into in the description. I'd like to give a thanks to Jesper the End. He did a lot of testing on Mac ten point nine. Uh, the platforms that we've tested are Linux, which is uh, on Ubuntu uh, fourteen oh four, and I've on my virtual machine on the Mac side last time I tried this it crashed the uh, finder yeah it's not gonna yeah it screws it up uh, but this version is 10.8 and Jesper is testing it on 10.9 so we l at least know it works on 10.8 and 10.9 I have no idea if it works properly on 10.6 or 10.7. If it doesn't, I'm sorry, there's not much I can do. Uh, but that's it. Um, there will be links in the description. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a good evening.